What is going on, NFL fans? I'm Jay All Day, and in this week's episode, we're going to break down Week 15 of the NFL games for your Survivor Pool picks. If you made it to Week 15, you only got a few weeks left, guys. We're getting down to the nitty-gritty. My lock of the week cashed again for us last week. We picked New Orleans to beat the Panthers, and they dominated all day. Our last three weeks, the lock of the week, have all won for us, and we're continuing to get closer and closer to that finish line. I'm going to break down week 15. Stay tuned. Real quick before we get started, I want to recap a couple games from week 14. I told you guys that the Bears could potentially beat the Lions, and that is exactly what happened. I knew it was going to happen. I knew that was a trap game. Jerichoff has not been playing good, so if you avoided that, you could pat me on the back for that one. Another one. Our lock of the week, the Saints crushed the Panthers. We were on that one. Good for us, guys. And then close games, Jaguars, Browns. I knew that game was going to be super close. And we always say we want to avoid bad weather games, guys. Texans at the Jets. It looked juicy on paper, but the Texans were on the road. The weather was bad. we got to avoid spots like that. And if you listen to what we say on this channel to do those things, you avoided that game and you dodged a bullet, man, because the Jets won. And then we had some other upsets, guys. Look at this. I even called the Bills beating the Chiefs last week. I knew that was going to happen. The Chiefs have not been looking that good this year, especially that offense. Then on Monday night, there were two big upsets. Man, the Titans came back and beat the Dolphins, and the Packers lost to the Giants. I like staying away from road games. That's why I didn't like the Packers, especially young teams on the road. you got to avoid that stuff, man. And I can't believe the Dolphins blew that lead. That looked like a lock for sure, but the Titans grinded it out, especially because they're so bad on the road. That was a game I thought the Dolphins would easily win, but man, yikes. All right, on to week 15. If you haven't yet, guys, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. I'm only 16 subscribers away from 4,000, so if you can help me out, subscribe to the channel. I'm going to continue to bring you guys the best survivor picks and predictions on YouTube. Let's get into week 15. We kick off the week on Thursday night with the Chargers on the road playing in Las Vegas against the Raiders. Justin Herbert is done for the year, it looks like, guys. He just had surgery on one of his fingers in his throwing hand. It looks like Easton Stick is going to get the start, whoever the fuck that is. Apparently, he's a fifth-round pick from 2019 out of North Dakota State. He looked pretty terrible in relief of Justin Herbert last week, so I'm staying away from this game. Two bad teams. You had to pick one of them. I guess I would pick the Raiders, but they're super inconsistent, too. The Raiders... Chargers, I'm not in on this game, but I do like the next game. The Vikings on the road versus the Cincinnati Bengals. Jake Browning has been really, really good in relief of Joe Burrow. He looks like a serviceable guy. Is he an NFL starter? I'm not sure quite yet, but the Vikings look in complete disarray. Josh Dobbs has been hot garbage, lit on fire, living with Oscar the Grouch. Man, he looks absolutely terrible. The Vikings are definitely sliding. They are in the playoff hunt still somehow, but Justin Jefferson, Coach Kevin O'Connell said he's probably going to play after Josh Dobbs threw a pass high up and he got smoked. That's why I think Nick Mullins is getting the start. Yikes. I don't love the Bengals in this spot. They're not my pick of the week, but it's a definitely a team that I really, really like in this spot, especially them being at home. Then we move to the Steelers with no Kenny Pickett going against the Colts and Gardner Minshew. Ugh, this is a tough game, guys. Both are 7-6, and six, both still in the playoff hunt. I don't really see a real advantage for any team in this game. If you're still alive in Week 15, I would stay away from this game. I don't like Pittsburgh or Indianapolis in this spot. Go to another game. There's a lot better spots this week. Then we go to the Broncos at the Lions, another game that I'm avoiding like the plague. Jared Goff has been extremely inconsistent the last four or five weeks, and the Broncos are like the poster child for inconsistency, right? Sometimes the offense looks good, sometimes the defense looks good, and then sometimes they look like they don't even belong in the NFL. Another game I'm staying away from. Next up, we have the Bears, who've been playing a little bit better lately, playing the Cleveland Browns. Joe Flacco looks more than serviceable. He looks really, really good, actually, and I can't believe he wasn't on an NFL roster at this point in the year, especially with all the injuries. Flacco looks pretty good, and it looks like he's going to lead them to a playoff berth. I like the Browns in this spot, especially at home with that really good defense. I think they're going to give Justin Fields a lot of trouble, but I think there's some better spots in this week. If you don't have a lot of good teams, you could go with the Browns, potentially. They are 6-1 and one at home. That's a plus, but Nah, I think there's some better spots for us, but I do like that game. Next up, we have the Buccaneers traveling on the road to Green Bay. I don't want any part of this game at all whatsoever. Baker Mayfield has been coming back at the end of games and winning games for the Buccaneers. 
Jordan Love had a big setback last week with that loss. Everyone thought they were going to beat the New York Giants, but they lost. But they're coming home. They're 4-2 and two at home. But Baker Mayfield, this game has a lot of playoff imp- implications for us. So, I'm not a spot I really like. This is anyone's game. The line thinks that too. Minus 3.5. Usually you get like around minus 3 points when you're the home team. So, even Vegas thinks this is a round to pick them. Next on this Week 15 slate, we have the Houston Texans on the road playing the Tennessee Titans. The Titans do play pretty good at home. And the Texans are very banged up, guys. C.J. Stroud is in concussion protocol. He might not play in this game. And then wide receiver Tank Dell looks like he's out for the rest of the year. The Texans just put him on IR. So this is a spot I don't particularly love. The Titans play pretty good at home. They had a really good comeback week last week against the Dolphins. And not a spot I particularly love. And then we have a division game, Jets at the Dolphins. You know, if you follow my content, I do not like division rival games. I try to avoid them like the plague. The Jets had a really good win against the Texans last week. Zach Wilson looked like a brand new guy, but the weather was really bad, so I don't know if Zach Wilson actually turned a corner and doing meditations and yoga and all that bullshit with Aaron Rodgers is actually working, but we'll see this week against the Dolphins who blew a lead against the Titans late last week, so they really need a If they want that number one seed in the AFC, they have to beat the Jets here. That's another reason why I don't like this spot at all whatsoever. There are better games. Then we have the Chiefs at the Patriots. I like the Chiefs in this spot to bounce back. They have been playing like shit the last couple weeks. I think it's time for them to get it together. I wouldn't be surprised if they blew out New England, even though they are on the road. I look for Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey to rally that locker room. They're still going to win the division, it looks like, but they're kind of reeling. So I think they need to right the ship a little bit. I look for them to get a big W. I like that spot for them, but I don't love it because they're on the road. Next on the slate is a really fun game between the Giants and the Saints. From a survivor perspective, Perspective, I don't like this game at all, but it should be fun. DeVito's got the Giants kind of rallying a little bit. They look pretty good. They had a big-time win on Monday night versus the Packers, and I don't believe in the Saints at all. Derek Carr is just such a little whiny bitch. He's always yelling at everyone on his team, and dude's not even that good. He's like mediocre at best. And I just don't love the Saints. They are playing back-to-back home games, which is, you know, always a benefit. And the only reason they blew out the Panthers so much because the Panthers just made mistake after mistake and turnover after turnover. I don't think the Saints are that good. And if the Giants went on the road and won this game, I would not be surprised at all. Avoid this game. Then our last 1 o'clock game is the Atlanta Falcons on the road playing this lowly Panthers team. I like Atlanta in this spot, but I don't love it. It's not my pick of the week, but... If you're in a bind for your picks, I think Atlanta, with the playoff implications, they should beat this Panthers team. And the Panthers just pretty much beat themselves week after week. They fired their coach, Frank Reich, a couple weeks ago. I don't like them in this spot, but Atlanta should win this game. I like them. I don't love them. Next, we move on to the slate of afternoon games, and here it is, guys, my lock of the week. I love the Rams at home versus the Washington Commanders. The Commanders just haven't been the same after they blew up that defense. Sam Howell continues to turn the ball over at a ridiculous rate, 18 touchdowns, 14 interceptions. The Rams are only 3-3 three and three at home, but they're starting to turn a quarter a little bit. This is a must-win game for the Rams if they want to make the playoffs. The Commanders are not very good. They have to beat this team, and if they win this game and some other teams lose, they can get out of that 8th seed and get into the playoff 6 and 7 seeds. So the Rams have to win. They've been playing a lot better, but Puka Nakua is in concussion protocol, so keep that in the back of your mind. If he doesn't play on Sunday and that scares you, I totally get it. But I think the Rams will win no matter what. They've been playing a lot better. Aaron Donald is in beast mode. I think they sack Sam Howe three or four times, get a couple picks, maybe some fumbles. I like the Rams in this spot. They are my lock of the week. Then we move on to the 49ers on the road versus the Cardinals. If you have San Francisco left, Somehow, this is a great spot for San Francisco, but I doubt anyone has them left. That's why it's not my lock of the week. But if you do have them, San Francisco, all day. There's no chance they lose this game to the Arizona Cardinals. They're going to blow them out. I think the line should be like 20. It's at 13 and a half right now. I love San Francisco in that spot. Cowboys, Bill, stay away from this game, guys. It's going to be an amazing game. It's going to be probably the best game of Week 15. I cannot wait to watch it. But from Survivor, no way. Stay away. Ravens, Jaguars, same thing. 10 and 3 Ravens, 8 and 5 Jaguars, two playoff bound teams fighting it out for higher seeds. No chance I'm betting on this from a survivor perspective. I think the Ravens go on the road with that defense and, you know, eke out a win, maybe like 21 20. But 
like maybe like a last minute field goal, but I'm staying away from that. Now it's the final game of week 15. We have a pretty good game against the Eagles, my reeling Eagles traveling to Seattle to play the Seahawks. I don't like this from a survival perspective because it's always really tough to play in Seattle. The Eagles have to fly across the country after getting their asses kicked by the Dallas Cowboys, who looked absolutely incredible last week. I think the Eagles narrowly win a game like 21-17, 21-17, like a last-minute field goal by Jake Elliott. The Seahawks aren't that good, but either are the Eagles. That defense looks horrible for the Birds. In my opinion, Sean Desai, the Eagles defensive coordinator, needs to be fired. His scheme is super vanilla. He doesn't do anything exciting. He never blitzes, and teams know what he's doing, and they're torching him week after week after week. They went 10 consecutive drives with giving up points. Nick Sirianni, grow some balls, fire Sean Desai. If you want to change that season around, and get to the playoffs with a defensive coordinator that knows what the hell they're doing. Thank you so much for tuning into our Week 15 Survivor Pool video. I hope you guys got some valuable information, and if you have, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. I'm only like 15 subs away from 4,000. I really appreciate all the support, guys, and I hope you win this week. Get that money, and we'll see you again next week. Peace!